All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. I'm the brother Shahar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. And within this lesson, um, but I attempt to do it again. I did it early this week, but um, I had some issues when posting it. So um, this lesson here is going to be in regards to the gospel. OK, and when you uh, look at the gospel, the gospel is always equated to um, the time when our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, was on the scene and he had preached his message. All right. And this is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And this is true. When he was on the word, I'm sorry, when he was on the world in the flesh as Yahweh Shai, he did preach the gospel. All right. He explained and expressed the gospel in its entirety and what it represented. OK, now. um, The gospel has always existed. The gospel has always been here. OK, a lot of people, uh, namely in Christianity, will uh, discredit the Old Testament and because they'll tell you that um, it's all done away with and um, they'll say Jesus, but he had came to spread forth the gospel. OK, which that's false. OK, of course, he did. Yahweh Shai did come forth and um, preach the gospel. He did further spread the gospel. OK, which you go into the gospel, the God, uh, the gospel goes into the good news. OK, and that good news is that um, we have a kingdom that's coming. OK, and we have been redeemed. All right. From this flesh, of course, we ultimately want to be redeemed and receive those new bodies. But ultimately, Israel is going to be in the kingdom of heaven because Yahweh Shai came as our mediator. OK, and that's the good news. But this good news was always preached, even in the Old Testament, that good news was preached. OK, it was preached that there was going to be a falling away that was going to happen. The Israelites were going to be scattered and we were and we were going to have to be delivered by a prophet that was likened unto Moses. And that was written in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. OK, so the gospel has always been here. OK, in the Old Testament and the New Testament go hand in hand with one another and they both go into the gospel. So within this lesson, I'm going to touch up on that, I'm going to show you in the Old Testament where you can find the gospel as well. OK, so the first scripture I'm going to start off on and really I'm going to start off in the book of Hebrews, the third chapter, and I'm going to read it into Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Now, it's not a long chapter, but I just kind of want to further touch up on this because this here goes in to us being in the wilderness. OK, on the way to the place of our rest which was the land of Canaan that was promised unto our forefather Abraham, which was allotted to Isaac and then Jacob, which was distributed to the 12 tribes of Israel. And that is the promise. OK, and that's a promise that has to be kept. All right. And this is a rest that we're still looking for to this day. OK, so this is the book of Hebrews, the third chapter, starting from the top. And it reads, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. This goes to show you that um, Yahweh Shai was also an apostle as well because he was sent forth from Yahweh, his father, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah or Yahweh. His real name is Yahweh. OK, mm -hmm. verse two says who was faithful to him that appointed him. OK, and who was the him he was talking about? It's talking about Yahweh. He was faithful unto his father. As also Moses was faithful in all his house. OK, so we see the comparison between Yahweh Shai and Moses, because you read about the prophecy in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter in the Old Testament. This is Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 15. And it says, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him shall ye hearken. OK, and that's talking about um, Yahweh Shai. And this is Moses speaking. OK, that's why in Matthew, the 17th chapter, when Yahweh Shai was on um, was on um, the mountain. OK, when he was on the mountain with um, with um, Peter, James and John, 
OK, when that transfiguration happened, that's where that voice came out of the heavens, which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. OK, so this is going into where it says unto him, ye shall hearken. OK, so going back to verse three in Hebrews chapter three, it says, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Inasmuch he hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is the most high. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for testimony of things which were spoken to be after. OK, and what was the things that was supposed to be after that the Israelites were going to be scattered throughout the four winds of the earth and the Israelites were going to need a savior to come and deliver them and be a sacrifice. OK. How do we know that? How do we know that Moses talked about Yahweh Shai? It says for a testimony of things which were to be spoken after. Right now, when you go into the testimony, only particular individuals can have the testimony and the testimony can only um, go into one thing. And this is it right here. Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do with it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, and Moses had this testimony. Moses was a prophet. Okay, so he testified of Yahweh Shai. Again, it says, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And Moses definitely came within that stead. OK, Moses was the head of the nation of Israel for a period of time. OK, but Moses also understood that there was going to be somebody that was going to be greater than him. OK, and Moses spoke on him and Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter in the fifth verse. I'm sorry, the 15th verse was a mere example. Verse six says, but a Mashiach as a son over his own house, whose house are we, which is the church, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end, wherefore, as the Holy Spirit said today, if we will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So now he's alluding back into the wilderness. OK, and you can find the example of us in the wilderness reading the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy and Numbers. And we were in the wilderness for those 40 years. And when you go into the history of when we were in the wilderness, Israel continued to sin. They continued to rebel against the against the um, uh, the authorities that was set up, which was Moses. All right. And that caused the majority of the older generation to fall off and die in the wilderness. All right. Minus Joshua and Caleb. OK, but you see how he's alluding back to that day in the wilderness where we were tempted in the wilderness for those 40 years. OK, and that was the reason why I'm going into this, because when you continue to read down, he's going to continue to touch up on the attitude of our fathers as they were in the wilderness in the time of Moses. Verse nine says, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years. And mind you, the most High did plenty of numerous. He did numerous uh, mighty works in the wilderness. OK, one thing is he split the Red Sea so we could cross over and enter into the wilderness OK, and then they bore witness to a chariot. OK, um, as the scriptures say, it was a cloud by day and a fire by night. And that guided us all throughout the year, the wilderness for those 40 years. OK, they witnessed the power of the Most High's presence. Get ready to touch the earth. And you can find all these examples just going into the history. So there was no excuse why Jake waxed um, worse. Ultimately, it was due to lack of faith. OK. And that's the reason why they had died off back then due to their lack of faith, their unbelief. All right. And this is an example that we have back then, how we ought not to walk today. OK, so it says, verse 10, wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. And what's that rest alluding to? Let's go into this word rest here in the Hebrew. Oh, well, uh, so like I said in the Hebrew, this is in the Greek. So like, yeah. It says, uh, let's see here, a resting place. 
It says the heavenly blessedness in which the Most High dwells and of which he had promised to make perversing believers in Amashiach partakers after the toils and trials of life on earth are ended. Woo, that is off. <laughs> you know, when you read this here, and that's why the blue letter goes off. OK, because it's talking about a place after you die. No, that rest that this is alluding to was the promised land. OK, and that promised land, that rest is something that we are still looking forward to. That rest is still something that applies to this day. All right. That we inquire, that we that we want, that we desire. OK, and that's rest from this labor, rest from this wretched, sinful flesh that we're in. Rest from our minds. And we're going to receive all that rest. All right. As we get delivered into the land, Lord's willing, we're those men. OK. It says in verse 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living power. But exhort one another daily while it is yet called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And that's the example that our forefathers showed back in the wilderness. OK, it says, for we are made partakers of a Mashiach if we hold the beginning of our confidence, which goes into faith steadfast to the end which is what our forefathers couldn't do that's why they had to die off in the wilderness and that's why that newer generation had to make it in that rest all right with joshua and caleb who are the only two from the older generation that was able to go okay and we represent that younger generation today we represent that generation that could very well be the ones to see that rest and i believe this is that generation okay it says in verse 15, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the days of provocation. For some, when they have heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? OK, so again, he's alluding back to what was taking place in the wilderness. And he went into why their carcasses fell in the wilderness. And it was due to sin, constant rebellion to the heavenly father. OK. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. OK, so it's going into those that couldn't enter into that rest back then due to their unbelief. OK, now, the reason why I wanted to read Hebrews, the whole third chapter, because I'm not going to read the whole fourth chapter, but I just wanted to give a summary. All right. And read this to give a backdrop on the, what the fourth chapter is going to be going into. OK, because when these scrolls were written, OK, when they were written back then, they wasn't divided in chapter and verse. All right. It just flowed. OK. So when you read Hebrews, the third chapter, it goes right into the fourth chapter. It eases right into it. So when you continue to read it in Hebrews chapter four, it's talking about those Israelites that were back there in the promise. I'm sorry, on the way to the promised land. OK, and the older generation that had died off in the wilderness. OK, and he's giving he's using them as an example to and how not to be today. Verse one says, let us therefore fear. At least a promise being left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Check this out. Verse two is the key point, because, again, this is going into the gospel. OK, I know this might have that might have been a little long, a long of an intro, but I just wanted to give a backdrop on what that was talking about so you can further understand this. Again, this is going into the gospel. Remember that and how the gospel existed even back in the ancient world. OK, the gospel ain't nothing new. The gospel was just protected and ex I'm sorry, um, it was perfected and expounded on thoroughly even more to a higher degree when Yahweh was here in the flesh. Who was that prophet that was likened unto Moses? So Hebrews four and two says for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Who was the them it's talking about? Those that had died off due to unbelief, but that was those that died off in the wilderness. But here it says the gospel was preached unto them. <laughs> and you can read about that. It goes into the deliverance, the gospel. When you read it in the Old Testament, it goes into the Israelites being scattered, serving their oppressors. And it also goes into the kingdom of heaven. 
It goes into it being established on earth. You can read about that in Isaiah, the 40th chapter. It's the gospel, the good news. It goes into the destruction of our enemies. That's all in the Old Testament, too. Just like it's in the New Testament. That's the good news. OK, the good news where we were going to be delivered from our enemies if we held fast our faith. I mean, the elect are going to be delivered regardless. But those are those that hold fast the faith until the end, as it was spoken of in the previous chapter. So let's read that again. It says for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. So the word was preached unto them back then, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And what did that cause? It caused the most high's wrath to fall amongst them. And they died in the wilderness. All right. And we don't want that example to be to be part of us. OK, we have those examples to move us to fear, to continually hold fast in faith in this profession in Yahweh Shai, as it was written earlier in Hebrews, the third chapter. And hold fast that faith to the end so we can be able to see that rest. OK, back in the ancient world, it was Joshua that was actually able to lead us into that promised land. He had led the children of Israel, the newer generation, into that land of rest. OK, now when you go into the name Joshua in the Hebrew, that is pronounced Yahweh Shai in the ancient Hebrew. OK, in the Paleo Hebrew, just like our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Now, they're not the same. Because reincarnation is real, but they're not the same. OK, the prophet Joshua back in the ancient world acted as a precursor. All right. Or a physical example. OK, to a man that was to come later on that was going to lead the elect generation into the land of promise, which is the kingdom of heaven. OK, Joshua acted as a foreshadowing of this event that we long for, that we yearn for, that we want it, that we want. OK. So it says, for we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, OK, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. OK, so it's saying all these works were even finished from the foundation of the world. And what does that mean? Even from the beginning of the world, these works were already declared. OK, the gospel is everlasting. The gospel has always been in here. OK, and you'll have a Christian that'll tell you not to read the Old Testament because it's done away with. Well, that means you're saying the gospel's done away with. OK, that means you're making void the word of the Heavenly Father. The Old Testament and the New Testament go hand in hand, and you're not going to understand the New Testament without the Old Testament. And you're not going to understand the Old Testament without understanding the New Testament. They go hand in hand. OK, the gospel has always been here. It was just further expounded on by Yahweh Shai when he actually came and expressed it. OK, again, that prophet that was like unto Moses. So if Yahweh Shai was a prophet like unto Moses, OK, Moses had to have been declaring the gospel as well. Now, what made them so similar was due to the covenants. OK, the covenants was given unto Moses on the tablets of stone. All right. The old covenant was given unto Moses. All right. Well, it was given unto Moses, but it was really. Moses was was the link between the nation of Israel and the heavenly father. OK, and he was that mediator. He was that intercessor. OK, and you have Yahweh Shai, which acted as what an intercessor and a mediator to us. Why he was called a high priest in the previous chapter. OK, because that's what a high priest did. A high priest was the mediator from the heavenly father to the children of Israel. OK, so if Yahweh Shai had the gospel and he preached the gospel, Moses had that message because they were likened unto one another. And not only did Moses have the gospel, but all the elect men, all the prophets had the gospel. They had the good news. They spoke on the good news. They prophesied about the good news. OK, there was no beginning nor no end to the gospel. You can't put a number to the gospel. You can't just say the gospel just came later on. No. Because right here, we just read that the gospel was also preached to them that believed not in the wilderness. OK, and this is well before Yahweh Shai was even on the scene as Yahweh Shai in the flesh. OK, now I'm going to jump to Revelation, the 14th chapter. And let's see here, and I'm going to read Revelation chapter 14. Verse six. 
And it reads, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every kindred. I'm sorry, into every nation and kindred and tongue and people. OK, so what does this mean right here? All right. One thing it's showing here certainly is that there is an angel that flies in the heavens and it preaches the gospel unto these particular people on the earth. Now, for you brothers and sisters that are out here listening, OK, have you ever just seen the angel just flying and yelling it out unto you? Absolutely not. OK, but this word is sent from the heavens. It's declared from the heavens. OK, you read about it in the book of Job, the 33rd chapter. I believe it's the 14th and 15th verse. It goes into how um, in the night when you're sleeping, the Lord seals your instruction. OK, so contrary to popular belief, when you're given utterance for the brothers that are prophesying and pushing this word, when you're given this utterance to preach, that's being delivered unto you from an angel to declare this. And that's the everlasting gospel. OK, it isn't just come out of our own will. OK, it comes from the heavens. This is something that comes from the immortal. All right. The eternal realm, the everlasting realm. OK, so the gospel ain't something new that just came in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. No, the gospel's always existed. OK, as long as Yahweh existed in the heavenly host, starting with Yahweh Shai, the gospel existed. It's considered everlasting right here. OK, just that's why I wanted to pull up that point in Hebrews going into that. The gospel was preached unto them in the wilderness. All right. But they didn't have it mixed with faith. OK, now I want to pull up this word everlasting right here. In the Greek, OK, because one will say, well, that just means it can't end. Well, no, everlasting means it always existed. All right. This is the word everlasting in the Greek. Strong's G 166. Ionios. Ionios. And when you go into this word Ionios, it says without beginning and end. OK, what was read earlier in Hebrews, the fourth chapter? OK, matter of fact, before I continue, I'm going to read that again. In Hebrews, the fourth chapter, it says, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, all the works were finished from the foundations of the world. All the heavenly father's works was done. Everything he wanted to be done. Even Yahweh Shai was a lamb that was slain from the foundations of the earth. So it was already done. OK, it just has to play out now. But it, it was already done. It's already written. It's, if it's already written, that means that the gospel has already existed. It's already existed even before the foundations of the world. OK, so I want to jump back to where I left off at in Revelation, the 14th chapter, going into this word everlasting here, alluding to the everlasting gospel. So it said without beginning and end that which has always been and always will be. Without beginning, without end, never to cease, everlasting. And this is the gospel, by the way. And when you go into the Strong's definition, it says perpetual, also used of past time or past and future as well. Eternal, forever, everlasting. World began. <laughs> so vocab and different people. OK, that love to discredit the Old Testament, you know, and they'll say it's done away with. They'll say pretty much, you know, it, it changed when the Lord came. No, the scriptures say Yahweh Shai is the same yesterday as the same today is the same forever. Loosely paraphrasing. So if he was the same, that means that word, that gospel, that good news has already existed, man. Even Enoch, Enoch, who was before the flood prophesied he even had the gospel he spoke of the good news that was to come he spoke about a deliverance that was going to take place and the destruction of our enemy same with moses i'm sorry same with noah you don't think noah knew about the fire that was going to come at the end if he's a prophet he would have knew it you know all the prophets we all have the same testimony and that's the gospel okay so I wanted to go into that point of Revelation 14 and 6 where it says there was that angel that flew in heaven and had the everlasting gospel. 
And it said, and preach unto them that dwell on the earth and every nation and kindred and tongue and people. All right. Now, this isn't talking about just everybody, but somebody will say, well, no, you're, you're reading it wrong. It clearly says everybody. Right now, when you go into and that's why it's important to pull up words. So when you go into this word here, kindred, because it says it preached all to them that dwell on the earth in every nation and every kindred and every tongue. Now, if that was literal, then there would be no atheists. There would be no Egyptologists. There would be there would be no wicked. None of that. OK, so then you have to think, OK, we have to further go into this. Right. So when you go into the word kindred here, that word there in the Greek is pronounced fula. Strong's G 5443. Fule. Fule. And when you go into this word fule, it says a tribe. OK, in the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch, Jacob, a nation of people. OK, that's why it's important to go into these words here. So this angel flying in the midst of heaven, delivering this gospel, preaching this everlasting gospel, which is the good news. And people love to say it's for everybody. Well, right here, this angel is only preaching it unto the 12 sons of Jacob, unto the Israelites. OK, this message is only for the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. OK, for the newer listeners that might be listening in it, listening in. OK, this is only given unto the 12 tribes and that's it. And we have that gospel. We declare that gospel. We believe all this through faith. OK. But when you go into it, it says this angel had this particular everlasting gospel that it existed even before the world was created. And it was preached unto us. All right. And it's the same angel that preached it unto them in the old world. OK, they preach it unto the ancient prophets. It ain't nothing new. OK, when the angel did it in Revelation, the angels always did that. They always declared their word, the, the word unto the servants. The Lord had always sent his angels to come down and do his will and put his word in his holy men. OK, because because those that dwelt on the earth, the nations, the tribes, the kindred, the tongues, the people, it's talking about holy souls. It's talking about his elect. OK, it's talking about his chosen. All right. And this is the gospel, the good news. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read another example here in the Old Testament that the gospel definitely existed back then. And this here is going to be in the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter. And I'm going to start from the top. And it says the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon me. And what is that? That's the Holy Spirit. OK, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Hold on. He mentioned good tidings. Excuse me. He mentioned good tidings. Right. So what are these good tidings? Does it necessarily say the gospel to the T? No, it doesn't say the gospel. It says good tidings. But when you go into the word gospel, matter of fact, I'm going to just go back to Revelation real quick. But I'm going to go into this word gospel here in the Greek. And we're going to see what this word gospel means when you look at it in detail. OK, this is the word gospel in the Greek. Strong's G, 2098, euangelion, euangelion. And when you go into it, it says a reward for good tidings. What else does it say? Good tidings. It says the glad tidings of. Of the kingdom of God soon to be set up. But Isaiah was talking about that, right? So it had to have been the gospel. And did not the Lord go back to that when he was in the synagogue? Matter of fact, there's an account you read of in Luke where Yahweh Shai went into the synagogue and he actually read that from the scroll. He read that from the scroll and the Israelites got mad. Why did he read that from the scroll? If it was done away with or if it was insignificant. Now, he did say this is fulfilled because he comes in the whole volume of the book. But just because he says something is fulfilled doesn't mean that it's done. No, that means he fulfilled it. He it was him. 
He said it's fulfilled, meaning it was him. It's me. Not me, but you know what I mean. It's him. Okay. It says the glad tidings of the kingdom of the most high soon to be set up. And subsequently also of Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, the founder of this kingdom. Okay. And it's a lot to read right there, you know, but um, it says the glad tidings of salvation through Hamashiach. The old prophets talked about salvation that was going to come through the Messiah. Moses talked about a salvation that was going to come through a Messiah. Okay. How do you know that? Moses talked about a star that was going to come out of Jacob. All right. And he was going to come down and he was going to put all the heathen nations in captivity. And he was going to burn off Amalek and the rest to eat him. That's written of in the law. The scriptures say in Deuteronomy 33, it says a fiery law shall come down with ten thousands of his saints. And that's part of the gospel. OK. It says the gospel. It says as a messianic rank of Yahweh Shai was proved by his words, his deeds and his death. The narrative of the sayings, deeds and death of Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach came to be called the gospel or glad tidings. OK, so I wanted to read and go into what that word gospel actually means. And I want to jump back to the book of Isaiah. The 61st chapter. So Isaiah is saying the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek, the gospel in the Old Testament. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. OK, because there was a point of time we all was through, man. We had to be delivered from the burden that came with the law back then. OK, because there was a, the law was perfect, but there was a burden that came with it back then because we couldn't keep it. OK, so the thing about the good news is that good news was, look, you good. You got a mediator. You got a mediator. You ain't going to be judged according to the works of the law. Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> you know, because if you look at the works of the law and you look at your flesh and you can't keep it, you're doomed. But we've been delivered through that. And that's through Yahweh Shai. And they all knew that. Verse two says this, and this is still part of the gospel. This is still part of the good tidings, the good news. It says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. So part of the gospel is to proclaim the acceptable year. And, and this is just me speaking in the flesh, man. But it's very well could be the year. I could be wrong. I'm not telling you the hour nor the day. But just by the way things are happening and moving, this could very well be the year. All right. But it also says in the day of vengeance and that's judgment. The Lord coming back, obliterating and incinerating our enemies and placing their behinds in captivity. Binding their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron, as the scriptures say, as the Psalms say. All this is part of the gospel. That's why it's written for lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. And that's how he fulfilled it, because it's already written of him. Doesn't mean that it's done away with. Doesn't mean that it's insignificant anymore. You know, it's not what that means. And this is the gospel. OK, and this is what we're looking for. This is what we want. This is what we desire. This is the promise that was given to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. When Abraham received the promise, he received the gospel, baby. <laughs> he received the good news. This is verse three to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, Israel, right? Was it just not read in Revelation, the 14th chapter, that there's an angel that flies through the midst of heavens, preaching the everlasting gospel to all these nations on the earth? But when you go into that, it's going into the 12 tribes of Israel or Zion. It says to give unto them beauty for ashes and oil, which is an unction or an anointing of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And this is all part of the gospel. OK, and that's the good news. We ain't bound. We ain't bound to the judgment. All right. That the law says due to the things that we can't keep. 
and we got our behinds up and we prophesy and we declare it and stating it that you have an opportunity to receive the kingdom of heaven through Yahweh Shai, who had came and was sacrificed for us. And that's the gospel. Call Law Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai by Shimmer Kakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akyam, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.